All right, welcome everybody to today's interoperability panel discussion on Hyperledger Cactus, Weaver, and UE. Um, before I started, I wanted to see how many people attended the interoperability panel yesterday with uh, Takuma, Rama, and Jim. Two? Three? Okay. Um, all right, so, we'll, so it sounds like maybe we need to cover some of the same material that we did yesterday. Um, but we'll see what else we can uh, impart for those three of you who did attend yesterday. So first off, I'm going to start by introducing us. Um, so my name is Tracy Kurt. I work for Accenture. I'm a technology architect there. I've been involved in blockchain interoperability since my first day at Accenture. I got an email from uh, the folks there who were really interested in open sourcing the blockchain inter integration framework that they had created. And so um, that was really the first kind of task that I was given. How, how can we open source this? And so we brought that to Hyperledger Labs, which blockchain integration framework eventually became Hyperledger Cactus. So that's how I'm involved with the, the interoperability space. Takuma, would you like to introduce yourself? Um, what, what are you working on? In Okay, thank you. So, uh, so my name is Takuma Takeuchi, and so the, I'm, I am a maintainer of Hyperledge Cactus, and the new name is uh, Hyperledge Cacti. And so I'm also the, uh, working uh, working Fujitsu as a blockchain research manager. So we use the experience of the uh, Hyperledge Cactus, Cacti and uh, blockchain interoperability. Interbra so that I would like to accelerate the token economy technology uh, beyond uh, uh, the various industry. Yeah. Okay, nice to meet you. Hi, uh, I'm Rama, I'm short for Ramakrishna. I've been a researcher with uh, IBM for over a decade. And uh, I've been working on Hyperledger technologies, name, mainly Fabric, since its inception. I've uh, been interested in interoperability since uh, around the end of 2018 and uh, uh, worked on the Weaver before it was called Weaver. It was an internal IBM research project. And we open sourced it uh, about a year and a half ago. And uh, I'm interested in all things interoperability. Okay, so my name is Susumu Toriyumi, VP of product at DataChain. Uh, DataChain is a main contributor to the Hyperledger lab called UE. Uh, so we are working on the, the subject of interoperability for more than three years. And last year, we have decided to contribute to Hyperledger under the name of UE. And UE currently supports the Hyperledger public, Besu, uh, Koda, uh, Iroha, and Coram. And uh, it aims the trustless uh, interoperability solution for networks or blockchains. Thank you. All right. So I thought maybe we should start with a definition of interoperability. Um, so Rama, I know you've said your definition a couple times already during the conference, uh, also at Member Summit. <laughs> Tell us what, uh, what you think interoperability is. Interoperability to me is the way to, uh, when it comes to de uh, decentralized ledger systems is a way to scale up decentralized trust without forcing the networks to uh, integrate or give up their uh, sovereignty. That is integrate in the sense of having to merge together or coalesce into a single network. Uh, interoperability enables two networks to work together in order to conduct transactions when they need to, as they need to, and which are completely under their control, that is in an on-demand manner. And there are several different patterns uh, and several kind of uh, base use cases where uh, two different, two distinct networks need to link in this way because there are uh, transactions that cannot afford or uh, in the real world that cannot, just cannot remain within their network boundaries. So interoperability is an absolute necessity here. Now, what we've been seeing the past few years is uh, people have been building uh, networks, especially permission networks, as sort of a minimum viable ecosystems. They've been, uh, uh, going slowly, they've been picking uh, small problems and small and portions of business workflows to run a smart contract within their respective networks. Now those experiments are over, uh, people are uh, now finding that uh, you can't afford to leave these networks remain in silos, that is in a fragmented manner, uh, and uh, you cannot have their assets be just trapped within the network boundaries. So uh, interoperation is the way to enable the existing networks to come together to link when they want, as they want, safely and in a decentralized manner. So Sumo, would you yeah. add anything to that? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Uh, <laughs> at Data Chain, uh, we have a vision of the many, many blockchain-based system, uh, whether it's public or enterprise, 
uh, working together and to interact with each other to fulfill the complex task without losing consistency. So it, it will include the security token dividend, uh, trade finance, or insurance claim and payouts. And uh, the simplest example of such uh, interoperability would be the delivery versus payment of the digital asset. So where one party transfer the uh, digital asset to another on one, uh, one blockchain, and the payment is on the other blockchain. So even in this uh, simple setting, um, without interoperability solution or careful design, uh, inconsistency or double spending may occur. So I think the interoperability is an essential piece for, uh, for the task, complex task like uh, leveraging DeFi from enterprise systems. So yeah, I would say interoperability would be the must for blockchains to realize its full potential. Great. And Takuma, would you add anything to the definition of? Yeah, so uh, I almost agree with the other two, the two, uh, two de definitions, but uh, so, uh, I, show, uh, I, I, I like the other short, short, short definitions. So, so, uh, so in, in my sense, so, so the uh, interoperability is to exchange the uh, uh, form, formless or uh, intangible va value uh, across the, uh, the multiple industries, the multiple, multiple industry areas. So the, uh, traditionally, so the asset, asset exchange means that the, uh, equal to the money exchange. But so the, uh, in the today, the, uh, in the, this era is the, not, not only the money exchange, but also the uh, form, formless value, such, such, such as so the NFT or uh, environmental value or something. So, uh, so, yeah, so, uh, to, so, uh, uh, the uh, inter um, interoperability so is a, uh, uh, the uh, the uh, essential, essential piece to achieve the, uh, this uh, ex exchange uh, ex formless value. Great. So, hopefully, now you guys all know what interoperability is, uh, so we can base our kind of future questions and answers based on that. Um, so. I know when we at Accenture originally contributed Cactus with Fujitsu, um, part of the, the contribution was around the overlay network that we had within the two separate blockchain networks that we were trying to interoperate against. So Takuma, tell me how has Cactus changed and what is Cactus today ah. as we look at uh, the, the project as it stands? Yeah, yeah, thank you. So, the, uh, so, the, uh, so as you know, so the, uh, the cactus is, uh, so uh, last, last month, so the cactus, uh, cactus became uh, version one, and so the, uh, and, uh, in, uh, two, in, in three, days, three days before, so the uh, cactus became uh, the uh, cacti with a weaver. And so, the, uh, in, so in, my, in my understanding, so the, uh, the version one is not, not version one is not the goal, but only the start point because so the, uh, there is a lot of so so, uh, so uh, the, there are uh, the many uh, many blockchain interpreter to today so the, uh, so uh, I think so, so the uh, the uh, interpreter users are con uh, very confused because so the, uh, what we what I use uh, what what tool can, uh, should I use so uh, so uh, in order to break this situation so the, uh, I, I think I think it is uh, the uh, the margin of the uh, the uh, interpreter project is very important. So uh, firstly, so, the, uh, so uh, uh, the, uh, Weaver and Cactus uh, is merged to the one project yeah, in this time. Great. Mm. And Rama, tell us what Weaver brought to Cactus. OK, so. Or uh, I should say now Cacti. Cacti. <laughs> going to take, take me a moment. But what did, what did uh, Weaver bring into Cacti? So uh, the Weaver design philosophy, as we envisioned it, was involved keeping uh, we were sort of a, a value add to any existing network. So what we wanted to do explicitly was to uh, uh, avoid having avoid the networks having to fork the DLT stack that they were building on, and to avoid adding any components that would increase the trust footprint. Because any blockchain network is a really complex beast, and uh, there are a lot of uh, there could be a lot of vulnerabilities in any blockchain network. I think. Uh, I don't know how many people have done uh, security analysis, but uh, fabric network can be a, for example, can be a security analyst nightmare with ordering servers, with so many peers in different roles and so on. So what we wanted to do explicitly was to avoid uh, adding anything that would, uh, could increase the vulnerability of a network. So we introduced components called uh, relays, 
which you can also think of as gateways of the kind that uh, uh, Raphael and Dinakaran talked about in the previous session, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, act as uh, conduits or ingress and egress points for any network for cross-network communication. Uh, again, when I say cross-network communication, it's communication with any external entity. The other side could just be a centralized entity as well. Uh, and second, uh, the protocol units that are behind the relays in the networks, they are engineered according to the native uh, uh, smart contract or uh, distributed application logic of that particular network. So like in Fabric, uh, the end, whatever the network does, it does via chain code. So it does it the same, uh, any transaction it processes as part of a cross-network transaction is going to be uh, endorsed and ordered and committed just the way any other fabric uh, transaction is. And that allows us to uh, have uh, any cross-network transaction be as decentralized and as trustworthy as any of that network's native transaction. And the relays that uh, are going to communicate messages, they need to uh, confirm to some kind of standard that other relays can talk to but they are not going to be trusted for any other purpose. So in, in our protocols, the relays are uh, not trusted for uh, confidentiality, nor for integrity. So relays cannot mount find the middle attacks, for example, nor can they exfiltrate data. So these were uh, some of the, uh, uh, these, uh, these two components are what I'll mainly highlight, the relays and the interoperation modules as being a big value add when it comes to uh, maintaining, uh, uh, to performing secure, uh, cross-network transactions with adequate level of decentralization. Great, thanks. So tell us about UE and how it differs from what you've heard of the description here in Cact of Cacti, um, obviously also with the research that you've done previously with the, the work that's being done uh, in Cacti. Yeah, so uh, as I understand it, the, the one of the great features about uh, Cactus or Cacti is that it has a pluggable architecture. So uh, it adopts any type of interoperability, uh, including notary scheme, hash locking, or relayer scheme uh, Weaver takes. And that goes the same way for the messaging layer as well. So developers can bring their own protocols for messaging layer in Cacti. But at data chain, uh, we believe the uh, uh, relayer and the uh, light client uh, method is uh, the most secure and uh, the most feasible options for even in uh, enterprise settings. So the words don't trust verify go. So uh, also we adapt the IBC, Inter-Blockchain Communication Protocol, uh, which has uh, several characteristics like uh, reliable transport, uh, authentication and ordering, uh, which enables the general cross-chain atomic uh, sorry, general cross-chain applications. Uh, so I think the uh, Cacti conceptually is a very generalized framework for blockchain integration, whereas the UE is putting more focus on the communication with a set of uh, uh, concrete protocols and uh, specifications. So not to put you on the spot, Susumu, mm -hmm. but I'm going to anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, Yui, do you ever see it integrating and coming into Cacti, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. And uh, as I mentioned before, that uh, Cacti is very generalized framework, and uh, Yui is very specific to communication uh, with a, a concrete protocol. So one can imagine the, the combination of two. Uh, for example, Cacti with plugin, UI, plugin of Yui installed. But uh, unfortunately, uh, as far as I know, uh, there is no specific customers uh, who would like to have two technologies into one place. So uh, sadly, but I, I must admit that uh, uh, we are not currently working on Cacti integration. So, but uh, to me, it's, it would be very exciting to see uh, developer communities can uh, work on the UE uh, plugin for Cacti. Great. Um, thank you for allowing me to put you on the spot. Um, and thank you for the, the honest answer, right? Like, um, I, I think it's important for us to recognize that there are many different ways of doing interoperability and that sometimes they don't interoperate, uh, to <laughs> say that poorly. 
Um, but anyway, I, I guess the next question, uh, Takuma, you had mentioned the version 1.0 for Cactus. Yeah. Talk to us about what you see in the roadmap for 2.0 uh, mm. for Cacti. Yeah, so the, uh, so the uh, so cac so va so cac so cacti version two is uh, so uh, of course the uh, the uh, the uh, merging the technology of cactus and cac river. So the, uh, so in, to to be honest, so the, uh, we are now so uh, designing the uh, road roadmap of the uh, uh, the version two, and so the uh, uh, so. So in so to, to so in so with the so the margin of the river and cactus so the, uh so I think so so, so the, uh it is it is needed to so so the, uh the revising the the existing uh, architecture existing cactus and river, river, cactus and river architecture and API and, and so some some feature so uh. So I like to so uh, go 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 forward to uh, I like to so uh, make a better so uh, the bet, better interpreted tool than the current current now so uh, so the, uh, so uh, I like to so 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 uh, so 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 the, uh, we are now so uh, the revising the uh, some architecture or something so the, and the, uh, so we are now uh, making the uh, the uh, roadmap so the, uh, if the the roadmap is, is fixed so the, uh, we will announce later yeah. Thank you. Okay, so mm. still being worked on, mm. uh, as far as what's going to happen. It, any sort of specific work that you'd like to see go into that roadmap uh, when it comes to adding Weaver into Cacti and, mm. and the version 2.0 for Cacti? I think I'll just be happy with the uh, a platform that uh, looks coherent, where we can point to okay, here's the common substrate on which we can provide uh, a spectrum of features for let's say the validator modules, uh, which are somewhat different in Cactus and Weaver. Mm. Uh, if we can bring them all together and then build a base on which we can then go and have people develop more uh, new features, uh, 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 support uh, relays and different kinds of plugins like, like UE plugins, I'll, I'll be happy with that as the next iteration. Apart from that, yeah, I mean in Weaver we have, uh, we have been working on some other uh, uh, features that, that still remains, I think we can we will continue to work on those uh, after the merge and uh, mm. as uh, as part of Cacti. Yeah. You want to tell us about what those features are? That sure. So uh, yeah, mm -hmm. actively, I mean, we've been working on uh, adding decentralized identity yeah. support for uh, as a trust enabler for two permission networks. I think it's more crucial for permission networks to have that. Uh, so uh, it, it, this is something that we have uh, published in research, and we uh, there's a grad student who's been working with us on this for a couple of years now. There's a POC build, but we uh, haven't yet fully uh, built this into Weaver. So I guess uh, we are working on uh, one, po one portion of that right now. I think we'll get that done before the merge with the Intercacti. But after that happens, I think we will uh, offer a solution involving uh, did registries. It's, a, it's sort of a more ambitious thing because the way we, we are building it, it uh, it, uh, if for the solution to work and be adopted in the industry requires a lot of uh, purchase. And I think uh, there have been a lot of presentations on decentralized identity, right? So it's not quite a sell topic yet. And I think even the W3C recommendation, the drafts just reached recommendation status just a couple of months ago. So uh, I think both of these things are going to go hand in hand, the evolution of decentralized identity and blockchain interoperability. But I think there's a symbiosis there. Both are crucial to each other. Great, thank you. Uh, Susumu, what interesting and new features are you yeah. working on within UE? Yeah, so uh, Light Client Relay, as I mentioned before, uh, is arguably the most secure way to for interoperability. And uh, at the same time, uh, we see a lot of hacks, uh, especially in a public space uh, with a simple notary scheme. So, by the way, that uh, I think uh, uh, represents the, the difficulty of having a trusted third party for exchanging information. Uh, anyway, uh, light client and relay uh, is also said to be difficult, and uh, the on-chain verification process uh, uh, requires uh, computational cost and the block size. So we are right, we are right now working on the LCP. Uh, which stands for Light Client Proxy, uh, which is a combination of UE, IBC, and security-enhanced uh, hardware. So what it 
basically does is that uh, we substitute the uh, on-chain verification process to the security enhanced hardware. Uh, so without sacrificing the trust minimized assumption, uh, uh, thanks to remote attestation technology. So uh, currently we are working on LCP to uh, apply to enterprise stablecoin and security token uh, DVP swap uh, later this year. Also, uh, we, we are considering applying LCP to uh, build a bridge between Ethereum 2 to EVM-based public blockchain. So uh, we can provide the uh, interoperability not only within the enterprise blockchains, but also uh, with a combination of public and enterprise blockchains. So I think uh, we can ho hopefully share more information and uh, uh, lessons learned uh, in the coming months. Great. Um, so Rama, back to you. Uh, tell us about kind of the, the process of bringing the Weaver code and merging it with Cactus to create Cacti. What was that like? Uh, how challenging was that? Um, t just tell us about the process. Yeah, uh, well, the challenge shall continue. So it's been. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a uh, yeah. We've been uh, talking. Uh, we've been having like almost weekly meetings for uh, several months. Uh, and uh, thanks to uh, Peter Sakuma and the rest of the Cactus team for being so cooperative. And uh, uh, initially, we started just uh, doing a deep dive into each other's uh, uh, designs and code bases. Uh, we have a kind of vision, and I think we are still uh, aligning with that vision, which is that uh, there are uh, cross-network communication elements mm -hmm. that we can kind of uh, merge together into a, a, a sort of a communication uh, appliance. I think the, the Weaver Relay, which uh, Peter, who unfortunately could not be here, did some investigation on this, and he found that the Relay could be embedded into a a cactus connector and that could be used as sort of a, a, a communication appliance for for networks and uh, there's something that we're going to talk more at, I hope in the future about standards which uh, Dinakar and Rafael talked about uh, this sort of appliance can and should confirm to standards that are agreed upon by uh, uh, by the community uh, and we, we, so we have communication elements that we can merge we can uh, there are the interoperation modules that uh, Weaver brings, which are really the uh, uh, va uh, equivalent to the validators that Cactus <coughs> uh, 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 provides, uh, they have somewhat different uh, uh, philosophies when it comes to uh, uh, generating uh, data uh, state proofs or validating state proofs. So there are reasons to pick one or the other in a given scenario. Uh, there's a, a spectrum of different uh, uh, solutions that one could envision using in, in production, uh, uh, some which involve uh, more security or, or uh, less trust in the in, in particular components, uh, some which involve uh, better usability or less adaptation required in uh, the network that's already deployed. So uh, we want to offer those kind of uh, features or different kind of validation logics as a, as a factory or a, or a, or a set of uh, possible options. And then we want to merge the uh, APIs and the libraries that Cactus and Weaver have uh, respectively built for uh, developers to exercise or to trigger any cross network transaction. And that we can merge and offer as a single unified API, which uh, uh, you can use, which any user of Cacti can use and, and trigger a particular kind of transaction. And these transactions will come in uh, particular types like uh, asset swaps or uh, transferring of asset from one network to another or uh, the communication of a ledger state record from one ledger to another. So uh, there are some things that we are uh, working on merging, other things which we are working on aggregating and hopefully that will bring to, uh, put together a common coherent platform. So, But it's still a few months down the line, I think. All right, thank you. And shout out to Peter if you're watching, uh, either on the <laughs> recorded video or um, live. Uh, we miss you here. Uh, we, we wish you were up here with us. Um, he was supposed to be here with us. So just want to call him out um, as Rama did as well. So Takuma, question for you. Is, is there any business proof of concepts that are oh. currently using Cactus 
Oh yeah, okay. so uh, so uh, yeah, so so, so there is uh, so, uh, several uh, several proof of proof, proof, proof of concept concept uh, case. So the, uh, so first first case is so the, uh, environment, environmental. So the, uh, this is so the, uh, so uh, uh, this uh, so introduced in the, uh, today's afternoon session. So the, uh, so uh, now for this is to, uh, using cacti, uh, cacti, cacti to uh, the tackle the uh, env environmental issue. Uh, so the, uh, so the uh, the, the connection so the uh, environmental value and with the, uh, so and the CO2 uh, account, accounting. So this is uh, so the, uh, the POC with so the uh, IHI, the Japanese heavy company, yeah, heavy heavy industry industry company. And the second uh, the, sec uh, the second POC is so the, uh, the uh, cross border financial. So the, uh, this is also, uh, so the POC. Uh, this is so the, uh, POC with uh, as Asian bank and, and, and so the, this is so the uh, four four blockchain companies uh, co uh, collaboration this is so, the, uh, uh, so consensus and consensus and r3 and uh, the solami 2 and uh, Fujitsu. so the, uh, this is this is uh, uh, the, uh, the cross cross border banking is the second second uh, sec uh, the second uh, second example and also the uh, cactus cacti has so, so Cactype uh, provides some uh, the, uh, the, uh, some uh, example uh, example code on the uh, several uh, areas such as so the supply chain or carbon accounting and so, so the car trade and power trade. So that this uh, I think so that this is these are the uh, so uh, the product product key, key to the uh, the considering about so the new uh, new use case. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so. Susumu, uh, it wasn't a question on the piece of paper, but any sort of use cases that you can talk about and that exist for UE and how it's being used today? Yeah. So as I mentioned before, you can be used for a general cross-chain application, but uh, uh, what we, uh, the demand from is from the token transfer right now, just token transfer. So. Uh, DBP of uh, digital assets. Uh, we did uh, with NTT Data, uh, Japanese system integrator, about the uh, connecting trade uh, trade platform to the payment platform. So we can uh, change the asset ownership on one side, and the payment is done on the other. Also, uh, we did uh, some experiment with the JCB, uh, Japanese credit card brand. Uh, with uh, multiple stablecoin platforms. And basically, we would like to exchange the two different kinds of stablecoins uh, via uh, liquidity and atomic swap. So these are the things we, I can share right now. And uh, hopefully, we will see the uh, application of general cross-chain application. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Rama, I think yesterday you said you mm -hmm. couldn't share those things that you're working on. Is there? One. Okay, there's one. There's okay. One. But uh, so I, I don't think I need to talk too much about it because if you plan to attend the tokens workshop tomorrow, you'll get a much longer and more descript, uh, mm -hmm. uh, a bigger exposition of that. So do it in that. Just in a nutshell, there was uh, an experiment done by the Bank of France and HSBC together that. Uh, involved uh, networks built on both Fabric and Corda, uh, either running, uh, one of the networks was running, uh, was managing securities like, like bonds and another was managing CBDC. And uh, there were a variety of use cases that involved the two networks having to interoperate either to, uh, uh, to do interbank settlements, uh, to uh, uh, enable coupons to be uh, redeemed uh, across network boundaries and for, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the case that uh, Susumu uh, mentioned earlier, DVP, which is uh, a delivery of a bond uh, versus a payment on a different network. So uh, we, what you've seen in the past year and which has driven interest in Weaver and actually in other platforms like Cactus and I imagine UE is CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currency, because uh, the various central banks as well as the other retail banks that are under those, uh, that are regulated by the central banks, are really uh, interested in how they can use, uh, how they can adopt CBDC for more efficiency, but how also can they make it uh, uh, easy for uh, the different platforms like the wholesale CBDC uh, networks and the retail CBDC networks to work together. So you're going to have different networks, they need to interoperate, 
So they are all they are shopping for different kind of solutions, and we were as part of one such experiment last year. There are a few that are ongoing this year, which unfortunately I cannot talk about, but hopefully soon. Okay, great. Uh, so as far as contributing to these projects, uh, I know for Cacti there are daily program pair programming calls that are held. Uh, there's weekly calls that are held with the maintainers. Uh, obviously, good first issues, those sorts of things. Anything else, either Takuma or Rama, you would add on contributing to Cacti and how uh, the people here in the audience or the people watching on the video could uh, participate in the project? Start with you, Takuma. Anything that you would add as far as ways that people can come in and contribute to yeah, Cacti? Uh -huh. Yeah, so the, uh, so uh, so uh, so after the uh, becoming so the cactus to cacti, so the, uh, we are all, always waiting in in Discord, and so the, uh, your your contact, so the, please please feel free to contact. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Discord. Yeah. Discord. 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 Uh, Discord. Yep. Yeah. So Discord. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Uh, Rama, anything else you'd add? Not really. I think the one of the benefits of bringing Vivo with Cactus is we can grow our community. Otherwise, it's been mostly an IBM project so far. So. It's great to have the, you automatically gain a bigger community by joining with the Cactus. Yes. Uh, Susumu, how do we contribute to Yui? What is the, the way to get involved in, and participate in, in what you guys are doing there with Yui? Unfortunately, uh, we don't have the regular community call or uh, discussion like Cacti. But uh, yeah, we are always open to the contribution from developers. So please visit uh, GitHub and uh, I think there is a very detailed documents right now so that you can start uh, coding uh, soon. So yeah, please visit the GitHub page. So github.com slash hyperledger dash lab slash UE? Yeah. Uh, search for UE. There are several. Yeah, there's several <laughs> UE repos in the Hyperledger yeah, Lab thank you organization. Very much. Um, Okay, so that's all the questions on my piece of paper. Uh, questions that any of the audience members has, uh, there's a Microphone there in the center, uh, if you have a question for any of the panelists here. Uh, Charles from EA. So the, the question I have is, with the sort of cacti uh, flexibility, you know, it can do everything. Do you see it staying at that level, or do you see you know, a handful of things, like UE, perhaps you know, different different things, but more specific applications being developed, uh, or do you do you see that you know, people will just take cacti and, and use it, adapt it to their own project, and you know that will be the end of that thing? Rama, you want to question make sense? Yeah, uh, I think uh, you're asking if uh, cacti is sort of a jack of all trades, and uh, will will UE as a specialized project? I mean, uh, yeah. So, okay, uh, the way I see it is uh, when we are building cacti, we are offering not just, uh, we are not offering like a very a blunt hammer that can hit any nail. Mm -hmm. It's more like we are clearly defining what use cases we are, we are solving, uh, how we are, uh, uh, how the protocols that we are providing or the capabilities we are providing in Weaver uh, solve the problem for you in a way that maintains both decentralization and does not expand your footprint of trust. And it's, uh, again, there's usability, which we are still working on, but uh, assuming we provide that, then it should really be quite easy for you to take the Cacti SDK and then uh, uh, ha import, uh, import the components that you need to configure them, uh, use the library packages, and then uh, adapt your applications in a very manual way in order to engineer your application. It's, it's very similar to how you would use, say, Firefly, because Firefly offers a good developer experience. And, but uh, even there, uh, I imagine you have to adapt your uh, client applications to uh, confirm to, uh, to, to import the Firefly packages, right? So that will be there, and we are going to make uh, our best effort to uh, add all the features uh, at the right granularity that can be used by any distributed application that needs cross-chain communication or cross-chain uh, uh, transactions. So, so I think I didn't actually express my question very well. Um, I didn't think I did when I was asking. <laughs> uh, but, but the question is really, do you anticipate seeing you know, a handful of 
labs project, perhaps, like Yui. You know, three or four things that are he, here is a pre-configured, pre-set up. You know, we've taken the SDKs, we've done the adaptation work, we've set it up for a particular kind of uh, use case or approach, and lots of enterprises will pick up that rather than, you know, or, or do you see enterprises developing their own solution each time? So will there be patterns that are developed yeah, yeah. Well, that people can just pick up and use as they uh, exist for their particular use case? So will there be a pattern for interoperability type X or interoperability type Y, right? That people can say, okay, this has already been done once. Yeah. I can use yeah. it again and, and uh, mm. right out of the box. I don't see the difference between a platform on, on that dimension. I think it's more about uh, like uh, UE is great if uh, your network already is compatible with IBC and you want uh, uh, to be able to interoperable with another network that's also talking IBC. Uh, what in Weaver and Cactus we are uh, offering is the ability to be interoperable if you are not. Mm. Like if you have not thought about interoperability at all, suddenly you discover there's a case, there's a, there's a reason for you to link to a different network. What kind of solution can you use? You can of course pick, uh, choose to, let's say, be part of the Cosmos ecosystem, uh, build, a, import, a, uh, 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 run a relayer that uh, talks IBC protocol like UE provides. That's, that's a valid way of doing it. Uh, Cactus and Weaver offer a, a slightly different approach where we mm. uh, don't, uh, uh, require you to uh, talk the IBC protocol, but uh, you have to uh, install a relay that can talk its own uh, its own protocol, which again, we are trying to uh, promote uh, standardization of uh, of that of that API. Yeah. But that's uh, some, some ways to go now. Thank you. Thanks, Charles. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh. Okay. And I think the way I understand it, their question is, we'll probably have Cacti to be a repository of different sets of uh, I don't know, protocols and different use cases using those, uh, use cases at the application at the higher level using these protocols. Yeah. At which point it becomes unmanageable and as a single project there's something we'll have to, mm. maybe that's your question, right? Uh, will it be a single hammer that we'll use for all interoperability applications or you'll have custom things based on some base layer protocols? Mm. Yeah, I, th I think that gets at it. it it's basically, will we'll Cactus, you know, you, you can use Cactus to make a lot of hammers. Will Cactus, you know, provide a hammer shop with a collection of those hammers that have been made? You know, will you manage those as, as projects or will you just say, no, you go and do your own, someone else can, can handle that. You know, if, if someone has done what you need, you know, go find them and, you know, copy their work. Yeah, I, or I will that be managed by Cactus as a, hey, here's a... Sorry, I, I don't want to monopolize this, but... Uh, just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 so, so, the, uh, so uh, okay. Mm. So the um, so mon so monorepo is so the uh, so the uh, based on the uh, so, so the npm pack, uh, so npm mon uh, mon uh, structure so the uh, so the uh, so this can be so the uh, com combinations uh, so the not only the so the, uh, type of script but also the some uh, rust or the, uh, another 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 language so the uh, so uh, basically so the uh, so cactus is, is uh, written in type type script and uh, weaver is written in weaver relay is uh, written in so relay. Uh, sorry, rust, rust, so rust. So, but so the, uh, we can co uh, we can we can combine it with so the uh, so the uh, mon mon monolith structure. Yeah. yeah. So I think one one mm -hmm. thing which uh, you mm -hmm. alluded to earlier was uh, interoperability among interoperability mm -hmm. solutions, right? So this uh, and we talked about this in the member summit a couple of days ago. You can uh, there are uh, several interoperability solutions have sprung up in response to the need for interoperability. Now, what do we do? Do we try to make these interoperability solutions interoperable? I mean, this is like turtle all the way up or down, right? So, so what do we do? I think uh, uh, I don't have a good answer to this, but I think there are certain, uh, as long as you have a limited number of such interoperability solutions that all solve the problems that cover the problem spectrum that anybody needs. And I think uh, both Cosmos and Weaver, Cactus combination, they, mm. they do, they solve all the range of problems that you need. If not in practice right now, they will, because it's part of their vision. So I think you can use any of those, those solutions 
what you may we may need is the ability to interoperate with the limited number of uh, such uh, solutions like uh, like the susun mentioned uh, a ui plugin within cacti or a, a polkadot uh, bridge within cacti so uh, these are the kinds of things as long as you have them i think if your network is already using a particular interop solution you need not fear about being able to interoperate with another network so i know we're at time just to call that out before you ask your question so um, feel free to if you need to leave um, but i i do want to say charles just to your your question if you have a hammer you'd like to sell <laughs> um, there is the lab proposals that you can do, obviously, right, to, to bring that code to make it open source. And I think that's definitely a worthwhile a avenue to approach, you know, selling of that hammer. And then, at, I don't have a no, I understand. <laughs> I, but I want to I want to make sure that everybody is aware, right, there, there you can contribute, right, to a lab. Um, and then at some point, if we decide that it makes sense to bring that hammer into cactus, the cacti, uh, then we can do that, right? And it's just then a discussion of, well, here's the source code, here's how it's gonna fit and, and make that happen. So um, last question uh, to Rafael. Um, I think the more hammers, the better, at least in an initial stage. Uh, it probably comes down to uh, the trade-offs between blockchains um, there will always be more than one blockchain um, due to the trade-offs of feature, decentralization, security, scalability that they mm -hmm. have. And I believe something similar could happen with interoperability solutions, especially if we consider that those are often used for scalability purposes as well. So um, not really a question, but perhaps a comment. Uh, possibly we'll have interoperability solutions with different trade-offs such as decentralization that are not captured right now by these more generic frameworks like Cacti or more specific frameworks like uh, UI. Um, and probably upcoming standards will also have a saying on which ones are um, more easily adaptable to the market needs and to regulate their need. So I would also really like to have an answer for that uh, or to know an answer for that. But I think it's something we are trying to discover on the way. Um, yeah. 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 Thank you, Rafael. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you to all that uh, attended here. Hopefully, the three people who raised their hand at the beginning actually did get something different out of this conversation. Thank you to the panelists uh, for participating, and we will let you go. Have a fun for the rest of the day.